Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into the Perth Christmas 2020 Sneaky Vinky from Gaz Weatherfits. Wow, wow, wow. So uh, we've done two Sneaky Vinkies for Christmas so far. This is your third sneak peek for Christmas 2022. And we've got one more to do next week, which will be sneaky peek number four. And then we will be on to the official Christmas countdown that will be uh, starting at the channel on uh, Tuesday, the 1st of November. So it's going to be great. It's going to be epic. And uh, I shall uh, get on. I don't want to say it, really. I should get on with your uh, third sneaky peeky for Christmas 2022 in a moment. Just to say that the first video today was our 6am upload. We have also released a look at weather for the next six weeks for America. And just before uh, this video went public on YouTube, uh, we were live streaming. So thank you so much, everybody for uh, checking into the live, and uh, we live stream our 10 to 14 day, we had a chat about the 7th winter update as well, if you would like to check out the uh, live stream, uh, you know, watch it back on catch up, then uh, you are more than welcome to do that, thank you so much everybody. But then that, thank you so much Rich for the gear, thank you so much for our sneaky peeky. Christmas updates gift, it's Bill Nye the science guy. Having a little sneaky peeky, I don't know. Do you? He looks a bit severe. Look, he's raising his eyebrows at me. <laughs> I think he's a bit stern. I don't know. Apparently, uh, it'd be on you know, be on the telly and that. But uh, but <laughs> I don't know. He looks a little bit severe to me. Oh, I don't think he thinks very much to me. But thank you so much, anyway, for Richard, for the sneaky peaky updates gift. And uh, thank you very much to Bill Nye, the science guy, for uh, for having a sneaky peaky. Right, well, it's better to get on, really, haven't we? Just say if you enjoyed the videos on the channel, please like, share, subscribe, and you will be able to see future web content, including future... Christmas Sneaky Peekies and the Christmas Countdown that's going to be released on the 1st of November or starting on the 1st of November. Right, let's move over to Metoscella.fr. We're going to be going through all four CFSV2 uh, runs again today, starting with the midnight run and then going right way through to the 6 p.m. Uh, run and we're just going to see what they're showing around the Christmas period. So we're going to begin on the 20th of December, with the GFS Midnight Run, this is how it's looking. Um, anticyclonic, really, with high pressure away to our east and low pressure out to our west. Just say that this is all for fun, of course, we can't ping down the weather exactly to uh, Christmas uh, Day. Obviously, it's much too far away to be able to do that. We're just looking to see what these uh, the CFS one on its four runs is showing for this late December, early January type uh, period. It's even too early really to be thinking about uh, trends and whatnot. So uh, when we get a little bit further into our actual Christmas countdown, then we will then we will be able to start thinking a little bit about trying to find a trend. But at the moment, we're just having fun, uh, really. Right, so here we go then. Uh, 20th of December, high pressure is over. And to the east of the country, ridging in from off the continent, it's mostly dry. Winds are in from the south, south east. Look at that. I think it will be mildly. It could be quite cold if there's uh, frost and fog and whatnot going on with that ridge of high pressure. So that gets us to the 21st of December, still broadly in the same pattern. What's going to happen then? Let's have a look. So uh, we're moving up to just before Christmas and lower pressure starting to come in from off the Atlantic. So 22nd, 23rd, and begins to turn more unsettled outbreaks of rain, especially so in the north and west. But high pressure is quickly reaching back in, uh, actually. So we've got to Christmas Eve, we're back under high pressure. Would be mostly dry, probably a bit on the cold side with that. Probably frost and uh, could be fog, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so a little bit on the chilly side, maybe, under that area of high pressure for Chris C. But high pressure is trying to inch its way northwards. Where's it going? So that high pressure is actually moving to reside between um, Scotland and Iceland by Chris Day. That's pulling the wind into the east. Although that's an east wind, it's not particularly cold easily because it's not coming from a, a cold source, if you see what I mean. The air is rotating, not from that far 
East Coast from the North Sea and from Germany. Probably just in continuation of quite chilly weather, rather dank weather, maybe damp. Uh, could be some mist and fog and that sort of thing, maybe uh, a little bit of frost as well. The question is, will this go further north and get to Scandinavia or somewhere even more interesting? Let's see. Uh, what happens. So Christmas Day, probably mostly dry, quiet, bringing in an easy wind. It's not a particularly cold easterly, thing, um, but there could be frost and, and that sort of thing. Boxing Day, uh, looking like that. So the high pressure still maintained over into the north of the country. Wind still coming in from the east. The easterly came from a little bit further east now. So if you've got the eyes about that, the easterly is uh, originating from like Denmark and Southern Norway. That could be starting to bring some colder air across the North Sea. So by boxes, there may be a few wintry showers beginning to arrive on the East Coast. Otherwise, it's mostly dry and, uh, you know, just relatively uh, chilly and, and whatnot. Right, what's going to happen after that? It looks like high pressure going to try to get to uh, Greenland. So uh, we move into the day after Boxing Day, 27th of December. High, high pressure going further northwards now up to Greenland, Iceland. And now we're really starting to pull in a proper easterly. So um, we're at 27th of December and uh, we're following the Icebergs that the area is now originating from Scandinavia, properly from Scandinavia. So this is beginning to pull um, genuinely cold air out of Scandinavia and northwestern Russia and uh, move it in towards the North Sea. Probably snow showers arriving on the east coast uh, at this point, and certainly quite a cold easterly wind beginning to, uh, to uh, pick up. Even colder into the 28th of December, we're into a proper easterly. Look at this. So it takes a little while to get there, but by 28th, 29th of December, we've turned properly wintry now with a proper easterly. It's funny, I suppose, that the air is actually originating from like northwestern Russia. Um, no, that will be bringing snow in from the east on those east winds, snow showers, maybe even some longer spells of snow. Ice bars are tightening as well. So that looks very cold and very wintry, actually, as we're moving up towards the new year. Wow, wow, wow. What a CFS run to start to solve. Goodness gracious me. Um, goodness gracious me. Right, what's going to happen as we get to new year? Well, that easy carries on blasting into the south. That is a lovely, lovely easy. If you want so across lowland southern England, that is the kind of thing you are looking for, that long fetch easy wind. Uh, nicely tightly packed ice bars, so, so that driving the snow showers inland, probably trough in there as well, we've got that kink in the ice bar, so that is proper, a proper easterly, that's as good as it gets if you want snow across, across lowland southern England. Now, we're moving up to New Year, and the high pressure is still out to our western northwest, still maintain this cold east or northeast wind. So New Year's Eve is cold. Probably the snow risk is easing off, but there would still be snow showers, I think, the southern and southeast areas. Otherwise, it is turning dry under this ridge of high pressure. It is still very cold. We would be in pretty snow cover by this point, so some uh, very hard, probably quite severe overnight frost and uh, and a very cold New, Year Eve, New Year's Eve. That's uh, into New Year's Day. So the snow risk continues to ease off. Yeah, it's probably still a few snow flows around the eastern coast there, but most areas are dry, actually under that ridge of high pressure. Still very cold uh, with hard overnight frost. So a really cold start, 2023. Mildred is just beginning to move back into the far north, north of Scotland with these uh, westerly winds. What happens through the first week of January? So high pressure pulls out to our west and low pressure pushes in from the north. However, that low pressure is not going on a normal track. It's actually going from north to south. So that low pressure is bringing milder air in for a while uh, around the 2nd and the 3rd December, probably involving snow, at least transitional snow anyway. Um, and then as the low pressure digs south, actually we pull the cold air back in again. So actually that could just be a snow event uh, there. It would depend on the parameters within the, within the atmosphere, but that's the kind of thing that might deliver a snow event and a continuation then of cold weather as the low pressure sits way to the south. So cold and wintry by looking at it in the first week of uh, January. Uh, however, we get further on and now West is coming back. All blocking goes away and we go stormy and zonal as we go into the uh, second week of January. So so what a run starts off with very cold just after Christmas with a lot of snow. Easterly winds, cold and wintry through the first week of January, then back to something milder for the second week of the month. What a month, what a uh, run starts off with. Right, so that's the um, 
uh, midnight road done. Let's have a look at the 6th then. Uh, again, starting off on the 20th of December with low pressure west, high pressure to the east, bring up like a southerly southeasterly flow. Probably a bit on the chilly side, as you show the more southern and eastern areas. Some wetter wind weather out west. What's going to happen? After that, let's have a look. So, we're running into 21st of uh, December. It looks like we're getting a bit blocked here, I have to say. This might be another interesting uh, CFS run. So, there's a lot of high pressure about. Got relatively high pressure over Scandinavia as well. Under this area of high pressure, so we're trying to say in December, just for Christmas, underneath this area of high pressure, probably frost and fog. Not overly cold, but could be, you know, could be chilly under... The ridge of high pressure. Now, we're on the eve of Christmas Eve, which is 24th of December. High pressure still maintained and dominating the weather. Christmas Eve itself starts to turn milder in the north. So high pressure begins to slip southwards. That brings some milder air into the northern half of the country. For England, well, it'll probably still cold and frosty under that area of uh, high pressure. Uh, Christmas Day, so high pressure is back in over top of the country by then. Again, mostly dry Christmas Day, a um, little bit on the cold side. Winds are coming in from an east or northeast direction. But again, it's not a, not a cold source easterly. So um, a bit on the chilly side, a lot of dry weather. Could be some frost and fog for Christmas Eve and also for Christmas Day. Now, will 6 they get this high pressure anywhere? Interesting. After Christmas, let's have a look. So this is Boxing Day. Again, maintain the high pressure. Maybe a few wintry showers with a northeast wind just into the far southeastern corner, but otherwise it's dry. Probably quite cold with um, uh, frost and, and maybe some fog. So so all three um, could see Christmas Day. Boxing Day are looking anticyclonic, quite cold and frosting up to that point. Now, we get after Christmas, so it's 27th of December, high pressure is to be south, so I think this is going to bring westerlies uh, back between Christmas and New Year. So, high pressure slips southwards on 28th of December, back in comes this milder westerly flow, and so that takes us into uh, a milder run up to the New Year, although for the south, we're probably still quite chilly, even up towards the New Year under the of high pressure, but most areas are totally milder of return of uh, both west is maybe some rain in the north. New Year's Eve brings high pressure back northwards again. So the high pressure is not done. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day going back under high pressure. Again, a lot of dry, quiet weather. Not overly cold, maybe a bit chilly, maybe overnight frost, that sort of thing. Um, just rather quiet and anti-cyclonic for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Through the first week of January, that high pressure is trying to get Scandinavia, but I don't think... Going to be able to, is it? Maybe. So, uh, up to the 5th of January, very, very close on the thing, trying to set, get the high pressure on Scandinavia. We're bringing like a chilly southeasterly wind, so it's mostly dry, a little bit on the chilly side, but properly cold air is lurking away to the east. We've got to get the high pressure of Scandinavia to bring in that properly, proper east wind. This turns very, very cold across much of southern, east and southeastern Europe as well. We do have a lot of people watching from uh, Balkans and whatnot. So hello to all of you. That is absolutely perfect just after New Year. A big old freeze up across most parts of eastern, southern and southeast Europe. We are still just not quite right. That high pressure is not far enough north. So I'll bring that in. However, we are bringing the wind in from southeast from off the continent and that would have a proper chill to it by this point. Now, we're going to get that cold pool actually uh, heading into Western Europe. So, although high pressure doesn't really get Scandinavia properly, you'll notice that very cold pool of air that's sitting across the southeast and east part of Europe uh, does make its way into the west of Europe. And we actually get a little bit of that coming in to the south. So, we turn very cold here, actually, at the end of the first week of January across the south. Really cold across France. Um, but, uh, but, you know, for England, Wales, cold enough to bring some snow in from the east. A little bit dubious about that because high pressure isn't centred over Scandinavia. So, it will be very difficult, actually, to get that cold pool into west of Europe from eastern Europe uh, like that about a proper Scandinavia. High. Anyway, it does sound very cold and wintry through the first week of January eventually, and uh, very gradually we start setting up quite a severe cold spell of weather, actually. So as we go any further on in the second week of January, low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic into that very cold air, that will be deliver, delivering snow and wintry weather. And up to mid-January, we're keeping it cold, really, winds in from the east. So a very cold and wintry first half to January. 
actually. And, you know, it happens quite unexpectedly, really. I didn't think that was going to happen, but it does sound very cold, wintry, the first half of January. Christmas is mostly dry. Uh, and a little bit on the damp side. Right, that's the GFS 6 there done. Let's move on to the GFS midday run. If you're enjoying this Christmas sneaky peek, I would be the most interesting one done so far, but I've still got two more CFS runs to show you. But if you are enjoying it, then please tell you like, share, subscribe. You'll be able to see future web content, including future winter updates and Christmas updates. So thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, back to 12 December with the, GF, with the CFS 12 set. High pressure is in control of weather again. That's a bit of a trend, isn't it? Before Christmas, high pressure is dominating. This is a mild ridge this time, though, bringing the wind up from the uh, Atlantic or in from the Atlantic. Uh, the source of the air is actually from, from a mild direction. Right, so let's see what happens. We go up towards the um, Christmas period, and uh, we look like that. So a little bit of cooler air beginning to drift into the north coast of this area, and the low pressure in the North Sea. The high pressure is going north. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Here we go again. This is 23rd of December. Even Christmas Eve. The high pressure is going up to Iceland. Cold air is beginning to advance in from the east once again. Off we go again. So this will be starting to bring snow showers into the east on the 23rd of December. And uh, Christmas Eve looks very cold and wintry. Look at that. Proper blocking. Greenland high. Icelandic high up to the north of Scandinavia. Winds coming in from the east. Low pressure is to the southeast of the country. That will be delivering longer spells of snow, which you believe, into the southeast. Meanwhile, elsewhere, snow shells will be pushing in on those uh, easterly winds. That's Christmas Day. The cold weather is maintained because the blocking is well and truly entrenched. So that's Right, midday, Christmas Day, and what a Christmas Day chart that is. 1,045 millibar air of high pressure over Greenland, low pressure in the southern North Sea, winds in from the east northeast, certainly cold enough for snow, and there will be snow across more southern and eastern areas, probably in the form of snow showers. And, of course, it will be snow covered uh, across much of the country from, uh, like, the snowfalls of uh, Christmas Eve and whatnot. So a white Christmas there for the uh, GFS, uh, the CFS 12 said Boxing Day brings that low pressure in from the east. That will bring more snow in from the east there on Boxing Day. So this is a very cold and wintry uh, Christmas with plenty of snow and east or northeast winds um, for both Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and also for Boxing Day as well. We go beyond that and uh, we uh, keep the cold weather going as we run up towards the new year. The high pressure is maintained, maintained the block out to the northwest, low pressure to our east and also to our south. Plenty of snow coming in, particularly to more northern areas this time, uh, courtesy of that area of uh, low pressure, right? Is this going to produce a cold New Year? I think it might do. Let's have a look. No, so, uh, we're up to New Year's Eve now. We're still in cold air. We are losing the blocking very gradually. The heights are reducing within high latitudes, but we're maintaining cold conditions uh, across the country. Probably snow showers and wintry weather. Certainly, certainly icy and frosty. Anyway, for uh, for the New Year, even if there's not as much snow as there have been over Christmas. Through the first week of January, high pressure builds back up from the southwest, so it turns milder for north, for the far north and west, but actually most areas will still be cold under that area of high pressure. However, further on into the first week of January, I think we're going to bring milder air back in from off the Atlantic, and so there we go, we start to turn milder, wetter and windier, with westerlies returning as we go through the first half of January, although heights are rising again by the middle of January over Scandinavia. So is that going to go back into those easterly winds? I think it is. So, yeah, we're back into very cold weather again by mid-January with more snow in places. Gosh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Right, so that's from CFS uh, 12. So don't you got one more to show you? which is the uh, GFS 18Z. And then we are done for this Christmas sneaky peek. And what's this one going to do? So far, we've had three out of four that are very, very interesting, I have to say, and one that produces a genuine 
uh, White Christmas. So, uh, what an update we've got here. Right, uh, finally, the uh, CFS 18s. Uh, we're beginning again on 20th of December. High pressure is waiting for the northwest. Winds are coming in from that easterly direction. What's going to happen? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So the high pressure is pulling out into the Atlantic. I think this is going to pull off a cold um, Christmas from a slightly different direction from the north this time. But that's the even Christmas Eve. The high pressure moving up towards Greenland again. Down are coming most cold and northeast winds. There's a cold front here that's pushing in from the north of the northeast. Behind that, cold northerly winds bring snow showers into the north and the east on the eve of Christmas Eve. That is Christmas Eve itself. That looks cold and wintry again, doesn't it? With high pressure blocking around Greenland, low pressure is to our south and east. That would be driving in snow showers to uh, northern and eastern areas in particular. Probably longer spells of snow in the north. Courtesy of that area of low pressure. That's a little bit, a little bit like Christmas 1995. It'd probably be mostly dry down in the south, but very cold in all areas. Uh, right, so a, another one producing a cold and potentially white Christmas bear from the GFS 18 Z. Uh, that's Boxing Day, so cold weather is maintained, but it looks as though the blocking is already starting to go away. Drift southwards by Boxing Day, but still cold and wintry. For Boxing Day uh, as well. I think this will bring mild air back in, though, just after Christmas. So that's 27th of December. Mild air begins to be back in from off the Atlantic Ocean. High pressure goes down to Spain. Low pressure deepens around Iceland. So just briefly very cold uh, over the days of Christmas. We'll see Christmas Day, Boxing Day. And then we're back into milder, much milder weather as we run up to the new year with rain and Atlantic winds. So that's New Year's Eve looking rather mild and stormy for New Year's Eve, and uh, beyond that we go through the first week of January, so New Year's Day also looking unsettled, mild, wet, windy, that sort of thing, and uh, we go through the first week of January, literally mild, but starting to turn a bit colder again, as that low pressure clears away east, that brings something a bit colder back in from the north once again, the CFS 18 said wants to turn it cold, but isn't doing it with as much conviction as the other three did, nevertheless we're into a uh, into the second week of January now, we are looking quite cold with uh, high pressure generally to our north and northwest. And uh, by mid January, it looks like we're setting up quite a prolonged spell of cold weather there. High pressure out to the west and uh, northerly east winds and snow and whatnot. Right, well, let's go back to the bill. To Billy Naive, a science guy, -y. Uh, let's go back to him. I'll put the webcam up. Oh, wow, well, wow, well, wow! Well. That was interesting, wasn't it? I bet you wasn't expecting that when we started. So all four of the uh, CFS runs there, every one of them, showing uh, the chance of some cold weather at some point. We've got the 12s, which gets very, very cold and snowy um for christmas for christmas you know the other two are a little bit after christmas and then the 18th Z does also have it pretty cold around christmas albeit turns milder up towards the uh new year what's going on i don't know but it was a fun update i think out of the three we've done so far that one is the most interesting from a cold perspective remember it's just the way but the chance of coming out as we're doing it so, uh, who knows? Who knows what's going on there? But quite unusual for the CFS to be showing that much cold weather, uh, I have to say. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this third sneaky peeky for Christmas 2022. We'll do it all over again one last time uh, next Wednesday, and then we will begin the uh, Christmas countdown official on Tuesday, the 1st of November. It's getting closer. You yeah, enjoy the rest of your uh, Wednesday evening or whenever you are watching this uh, video. And that's all for now. And thanks for watching. Thank you so much to Rich, by the way, for the gift and to Bill. All right. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Bye for now.